If you have ever been interested in competitive programming, this video is for you. Welcome back to the channel. As always, so excited to have you here. Today I'm going to be going through my process for solving a competitive programming problem. So before we get into it, I'd like to thank Nestle for this bag of sweet tarts that I bought myself. They're delicious, so thank you. Moving right into it, this is going to be the process that I use every time I go into a competitive programming scenario. So there's lots of different parts of it, but we're going to start from the beginning and we're going to go through the whole thing. So excited to have you here and let's get right into it. So here's Code Chef, and now this is the platform that I use more than any other. Uh, it's, I like it, it's clean, easy to use, the IDE is built in, we'll talk about that in a minute. But as soon as you get to this site, you've logged in, here I'm logged in, and we'll check out some of the problems that they have available. So you can go ahead and click on practice. You can surf through beginner, easy, medium, hard, challenge, and then some that other people have written, those are the peer problems. But we'll go and we'll test out one of these right now. So when you go into the IDE, you, you can choose the section you want to use, and let's use the practice section, and then any of the problems that you would like to solve. Today we're going to solve a factorial problem. Let's get that up. CT, there it is, factorial. Once you select that, it'll show you all of the details of the problem. Now with any programming problem, you're going to see kind of like a word problem like you used to see in math. They'll explain the scenario, then they'll explain what they ask you to solve. They'll also have other elements like input, output, and examples. And then here, as I mentioned earlier, the IDE, so where you actually write your code, is built in. It's very clean. I have this with the dark mode, as I mentioned in a previous video. And this is, this is it. This is where we are. This is our command center for this problem. So let's go ahead and, and dive right into it. So I'll start by reading the background. Now, usually the first couple of paragraphs are a creative way that they've written to describe the problem, not necessarily very interesting or useful to actually solving it. So we'll skip down to where they talk about the example and then if we need more context we can go right back into their story problem. So right here we're going to start with where it says for example they define the function z. So it looks like what we're trying to do is create a program that is going to perform function z. So it says for any positive integer n z of n is the number of zeros at the end of the decimal form of the number n prime or n factorial I should say. So this function. So the z function is essentially calculating the number of trailing zeros when you perform n factorial. So a factorial is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 for the number 4. n factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. You're going to end up with 24 because 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times and then that 6 times 4 is 24. So we're performing a factorial and then we're calculating the number of trailing zeros at the end of it. So for example, 1,000 has three trailing zeros. 10,000 has four, but 101,000 only has three. They're only counting the zeros at the very end of the number. And it says this function never decreases. It's true. If we have two numbers, n1 is less than n2, then z of n1 is less than or equal to z of n2. It's because we can never lose a trailing zero by multiplying by any positive number. Fair enough. We can only get new and new zeros or more and more zeros, I think you should probably say. The function z is very interesting, so we need a computer program that can determine its value efficient, efficiently. So that is our problem here. Also interesting to note is the, the scope of numbers that you're talking about. So here it says the single positive integer t is the first line of your input, and it's equal to about 100,000, so it's probably the maximum. It stands for the numbers to follow. So essentially how many test cases you'll be seeing. So if you use this sample input right here, you see a six followed by six numbers. So six test cases that we have to deal with. And we'll start with that in our problem. But before we get into writing the code, and it's all very exciting to jump in and start writing code, you really have to understand the problem and exactly what you plan to solve. So here comes the iPad Pro, and I love using this. Um, usually. I'll just use a notebook or anything similar. But, I mean, we have the iPad here and it makes it easier to share the screen so I can show you guys what I'm working on. So, we're gonna call this the factorial problem. 
and go ahead and get started. So now when we're talking about this situation, we know that we have a function z. So z is what we're trying to solve. And let's get let's get some numbers in there. So I'm going to use a different color here so it can be more clear. So we'll start with the blue. And this is going to be our input numbers. So let's say input over here. We let's let's just do some quick one two You know, I, I used one through 10, I also have 25, 100, and 1,000 just to give us an idea of how this thing scales as we go. So now we're gonna want, let's change colors again. Let's get a red in there. And this is gonna be our factorial. Now this is definitely gonna be a calculator problem. So I'm gonna pull my phone out for this guy. Okay, so get a little scientific on us. So, Pretty easy. So one factorial is going to be one, two factorial is two, three is six, four is 24. Give ourselves a little more screen space here. Five is going to be 120. And now before we go any further, I'm going to grab another color. Let's use a green and say trailing zeros because that's what we really want. Here is what we're actually trying to solve for. So this is gonna be the output of our problem. So we get an input and we need an output. We're using this factorial in between to give us a sense of how that works and what it's gonna look like. So here we've got zero, 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 because there's no trailing zeros. Here's our first trailing zero. So when we get to five, we have one trailing zero. So now let's go back to our problem. Let's get back to our red. It's probably not the same red, but it's gonna work. Now let's keep going. Six factorial is 720. 7 factorial is 50, 40. Now I'm using a calculator for this. So I don't think that this is anything special. 8 factorial is 40,320. Again, we're still only looking at one single trailing zero. 9 factorial is 362,880. These are going to get pretty big pretty fast. But 10 factorial, 3,628,800. And that's going to give us our two fact two trailing zeros. And so the first one was at five and the second one we got at 10. So that's gonna be interesting to us later. Let's see what 25 gives us. I'm not gonna write the entire thing, but we end up with six trailing zeros. So now if we go to our color wheel, I'll think about why that happens. We got one, one, one. And then when we got to 10, we got two. But when we got to 25, we got six. So I wanna talk about some of those patterns. Every time we hit a multiple of five, we're adding a trailing zero here. So five and then 10. So the first thing we can do in our scenario is divide our number by five. Let's say our number is 99. Divided by five is gonna give us 19. So 19 trailing zeros. But the interesting thing is when we get to 25, that rule doesn't apply anymore because 25 divided by five is five, but we ended up with six. So it looks like you're also trying to keep track of the powers of five. So you've got five, 25, 125, etc. moving forward. So if we're looking at all of these powers of five multiplied into our numbers, instead of 99 being 19, you're doing 99 divided by five, and you're also doing 99 divided by 25, which is gonna give you three. So you add those two together since, I mean, 125 doesn't go into 99, so we'll stop there. 19 plus three is gonna give us a final value of 22. So there's our example. So now putting that away for a second, our little notebook, we can start writing some code. Now, when I use Code Chef, I almost always take the sample input first and put a little custom input in there so that when we start to run our problem, we know exactly what we're looking for. And I also have this set up to understand how the test situation works. So first it creates a variable for tests and then it takes that in, so that's the six, so it reads the six and then it's gonna go through this while loop every time for six different trials. So now what we're looking at is we need a number for our input and then we're also gonna need a number for our answer. So let's call it trailing zeros 
is going to be one of them. And the second one we're going to call um, num for number. First, we're going to see in that number. And then we got to do some sort of for loop. So, and our, we're going to start with five. So we need to figure out for each power of five, we need to divide our number by that power of five. So let's start by doing the powers of five here. Oh, that should be a semicolon. See, you forget these things. Num. And then we're multiplying it by five here. So now this is going to run for every single power of five that is less than or equal to the number. So when we get to that, we're going to need to do, we've got our trailing zeros. We should probably initialize that. First, we got our trailing zeros to zero. Now for each of the powers of five, I want to do trailing zeros it adds to trailing zeros the num divided by i which is going to be our power of five now let's let's see what we get from there let's say we're seeing out our trailing zeros and ending the line for the next test case so we've got our custom input we can run it with that custom input and see these numbers are going to get really big really fast so we've got 0, 14, 24, 253, 58, 61. And that looks pretty good to me, 28. So at this point, I'll usually submit and see what happens. So I, I know there are a lot of people that like to have things absolutely perfect, test all their edge cases before they submit. But in a competitive programming scenario, you're probably going to want to get things done as quickly as possible. So it asks if you're sure if we want to submit. Absolutely, I'm sure. And let's see what we get. And if, if it does come back with an issue where a time limit exceeded, we can then look into those problems. But in this case, it gave us the correct answer. So it looks like we solved this one. And let's talk about that process really quick. When I go on to these coding problems, I'll first start by saying, okay, what is this problem actually asking? And I'll try to draw that out. Now we did that a little bit on this iPad here and starting to understand the patterns of each problem is going to help you with the programming. Now, if you look at it, we wrote, a whole lot on this notebook but when we actually got to the code it's only a few lines and we could probably have written it in even fewer but understanding the patterns of the problem really helped us to know exactly what we needed to solve for and solving that problem feels great so that's the process that I go through thanks for joining in always appreciate you being here if you like this video please drop something in the comments below don't forget to like and share this video and if you're not subscribed please make sure you get that done before this video ends if you have any recommendations for other videos that you think I should do, please drop that in the comment section below as well. And we will see you in the next video. Thanks.